<laughs> Already. <laughs> All right, we're back with World's Strongest Opinions, episode 26 with Brian Osru of Never Say. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great to have you on. I was a big fan of you uh, starting YouTube Fitness because I got into fitness kind of later, and it was always great watching your like strongman videos with like you because I remember I think I saw you with Juji Mufu and you were doing more yep. of the strongman stuff. That was like what I always call the golden era of YouTube. That like I agree too, man. Twenty fifteen like to like twenty nineteen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There was like a like right before COVID. COVID kind of changed things a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you're right, it was like 2014, 2015 until then. It was like so many iconic type of like YouTube fitness people kind of came up and. Uh, I got to be part of that, which was was a super random thing in itself, which is a, a story on its own. Yeah, I was going to ask. I was like, what what all got you into it? So I I never uh, I was never interested in being a YouTube person. It's not it's not my I, I'm not a social guy. I'm a very private guy. We were talking before the show. Like I live in the middle of the wilderness on 27 acres of trees with no one around me for a reason, right? Like um, <laughs> that, that's that's just who I am. However. Uh, I had opened a gym. I quit my old job and I had opened a gym. And uh, as most gyms go, a lot of friends and family said that they were going to come and join. And then when you actually open it, like no one really shows up. Right. And then it's kind of embarrassing and a lot of things. And there were a couple of people kind of showing up and doing stuff. And I knew that like I had something to, to offer and like give people and it, I, I thought it was good. And so I actually started making videos because a lot of times when new people would come in, we'd spend half of like the class because I ran a class at the time. And I was like, half the class was kind of reminding people about squat cues and basic stuff. And like, we were wasting time. So I was like, I'm going to make basic videos and then people can review them before they get in and we can get at stuff faster. And then uh, I just made a ton of videos that no one really watched. I mean, it got a little bit of views. I had a little bit of fun because I, I was kind of strong and had at the time, I had a big following on T Nation when T Nation like had a lot of training uh, logs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was alpha on T Nation, and I had like a training log that like was pretty big, and people didn't believe that I could actually do the things that I was saying that I could do. So I started a YouTube page, and at the time I was doing counterterrorism jobs. So I would go and do like a 500 pound front squat with my hat like this, so no one could see my face, and I do the squat and like hit whatever. And I get like 300 views or whatever for the people watching my vlog that were like, oh, wow, he actually can do it, right? Um, so uh, anyway, I had a bunch of videos like that. And it wasn't until I turned the camera on myself and started teaching that some people started watching. And I was getting a couple thousand, whatever. And then uh, I'm at the time, in order to get bigger on YouTube, the whole game was like comment on like people that you like their videos so they see your name. Other people see your name. It kind of gets around, right? And so Alan Thrall at the time was one of the biggest fitness guys. It was like him, Mark Bell. Like they were like two kings at the time. Like because like Elliot Hulse at the time was still like massive. He was like the king king. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, like guys like Juji were just coming up. I I wasn't on the you know, on the map, anything like that. And uh, so Alan puts out a squat for veterans thing. Do 22 squats for veterans. So I loaded a SSB with, two, with 405. And I did it 22 times, and that was a hard 22 reps. And uh, my legs, I was all, like, doe-legged at the end, you know what I mean? I racked it and got out. And that got his attention, right? And, uh, and I got some followers from that. Some people were like, that was pretty cool. Um, but then uh, he had a Q&A, and I asked the question of, like, hey, man, how do you get followers on YouTube? Because I can't, I can't seem to do this. And uh, he gave a great answer, and he was like, hey, man, uh, I actually remember you – and you almost died on like a 315 bench. That was a hilarious video. And I had responded back. I was like, because at the time I was benching like 505. I was like, that wasn't me, but that's awesome. Like, thank you for responding or whatever, whatever. Like, so he gets back to me again and he's like, hey, man, I looked you up and you're not, you're not who I thought you were. He's like, but I like what you're doing. Would you like to do a video for my channel? I did a video for his channel and it was like the dream that like everyone dreams is going to happen on social media. Like, one day I came home from the gym and I opened it up and I had like 10,000 more followers. And I was like, wow, like refreshed. And it was like just growing and growing and growing. And I was like, it's actually happening. I can't believe this is actually <laughs> happening. You know what I mean? And like, I, I gained like 15,000 followers or something, which at the time 
I didn't know one person in the world who had ever made one cent on YouTube. I didn't know one person made one YouTube video, right? And uh, so it was like such like a huge thing. So I really like my YouTube success is 100% due to Alan Thrall giving me a chance there. And then I flew out to Sacramento and uh, met up with him. And he took me over to Mark Bell's place, did like the podcast. And uh, like it, it literally was like they opened that door and I just was lucky enough to have enough content to continually here i am still you know what i mean yeah that makes sense because it is it is back then it was kind of like just the wild west like there was no pattern there was no algorithm you had people who had like hundreds of thousands of followers who hung out with people who had 1500 like everyone just kind of did whatever they felt like and it was like and there was like there wasn't yeah. as much fake bots and like fake followers and like the communities were actually like communities like like Omar Esau had like a certain community of people and like somebody else, like, you know what I mean? Like everyone had their own little group of like, I'm, like literally it was like community. It was like almost like in high school where they're like little clicks of like, oh, these are like the yuppie kids. These are like the jock kids. Like each group had like different little people. And like, I think that's why it was like such a cool time because so many people could find somebody that they related to and you got involved in that community. It was the first time do you ever used YouTube for something other than like cat videos, right? Like you were like, wow, it's almost like I'm in a collegiate class with like literally the best teachers you could possibly ever imagine. And like all the support you could ever need there. There's some douchebags and stuff, but like for the most part, like you walked into those communities and you, you went from like beginner status to a, you knew more than like, if you grew up in like the eighties or nineties in a gym, you knew more in like, 15 days than people learn in 15 years. You know what I mean? Because just the access of information and people want to share it and just act like they knew something, you know? And so like, man, it was an awesome time. And, and the way everyone just kind of grew from it was just incredible. And I, I mean, I wouldn't have a job in this if it weren't the right time. Like if I did it now, I don't have internet in my house. Like I, I, I can't- <laughs> well, you must. You're, you're on with us. <laughs> well, I have enough internet to like do this and like internet, but I can't. Or uh, do like emails, but I can't uh, upload videos. I can't live stream. I can't do anything like that. Um, so, and the only reason why I can do that is because I took a flagpole and attached to the roof of my house with a repeater because they won't, we don't have Wi Fi in our entire area. So it has to be okay. all cell phone. Nice. So we have like hotspots and dump, and dump. It's archaic. No, I know cool. when you asked me, you were like, what time like what do i need to be prepared i was like oh it just just hopefully a phone or something with a browser sometimes i have to like drive other places to get enough access to to like at, to be able to speak and stuff without it freezing every five seconds you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i told sure. Darren, i was like that's your job that's his yeah. dream to just go into the middle of nowhere he tells me Dude, all i the would time. totally be like, totally be a hermit i would be i would be like a, a total tramp if i could like just give everything up but i'm like i'm married you know i got a dog and got you know responsibilities and stuff but i'm like man if 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 i made it this far and i didn't get married i could just totally see myself just just like disappearing and just, just start walking and, just, just walk just man walking and just leave it all behind I'd probably be perfectly content other than I, you know, I still can't get enough to eat on a daily basis. So. <laughs> the food situation would be tough for me. That is totally understandable. Though. <laughs> I actually got involved in strongman in a completely random way as well. Like when I, uh, like I didn't get involved in strongman until I was 34 years old, which is very late for a strength sport for most people. Sure. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, I was doing MMA and stuff like that at the time, but I went to high school with Mike Jenkins. If you guys, do you guys know who Mike Jenkins is? Oh, yeah. Absolutely know who yeah. Mike Jenkins is. So yeah. Mike and I went to high school together and oh, nice. we like trained together and stuff like that. And then after high school, we both went separate colleges and stuff like that because he was doing different things with like football and lacrosse and stuff. And I was doing my own thing. Um, and then when we came back to that hometown together, we were training at the same gym, personal trainer, same gym. And he got involved in strongman and I was doing MMA at the time. And he was like, Hey man, like you're strong. You're like athletic. You would be so good at, at, at strongman. And I was like, man, all I know about strongman is like, everyone's like seven foot tall and like 400 pounds of fat. Like, I don't want to be, I'm none of those things. Like, they I, were I, back I, then. I mean, for sure. I, but yeah, because back then, I mean, you didn't, we didn't know other, you know, other than that. And uh, I didn't even know their weight classes, but he, he explained to me his weight class stuff. And I was always like, 
man, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's going to be great. Like, we're going to do it one time. It's going to be awesome. And then uh, I went into the government and did some counterterrorism for like 10 years. And Mike went on to do World's Strongest Man, opened a gym in Hershey, PA, and did all kinds of stuff. And I followed his career from like afar. And like first time I saw him at ESPN, I was like, I know that guy. And, you know, it was like amazing. And then uh, I got, I actually got in touch with Mike's first sponsor. Uh, he's, he's a guy named David Lee. And I randomly ran into him. And he had known me from lifting and YouTube and doing dumb stuff. And he's like, hey, man, if you ever want to do a competition, like a Starman competition, I would sponsor you. And I was like, thanks, man. But that's not really my th- I was getting ready for a jujitsu competition at the time. I was like, it's not really my thing. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to have a Christmas party, and Mike is going to come back. Why don't you come to the Christmas party? And Mike can talk you into doing, doing a show, and I'll pay for you to do it, and it'll be great. You can do a Starman show. I'm like, well, I'd like to see Mike. I'll come to the Christmas party, right? So Thanksgiving rolls around right before the Christmas party and we get a call and Mike died. Uh, he died in his sleep. And so instead of going to the Christmas party, we ended up going to a funeral. And when I went to a funeral, like Brian Shaw was at the funeral. They, they were like, it, I'm, I'm a decent sized dude, right? And like, it's a rare room when you go in and you're like, I'm the smallest guy in this room. And <laughs> that the place was full of like dudes with like an intensity but not like a – like, it's come from MMA. Like, there's some dudes that aren't, like, completely right. You know, there's some very nice people, but there's some dudes that aren't very nice. And Strongman had, like, this intensity, but also, like, a brotherhood kind of – we're going to beat you up, but also hug you at the same time intensity, you know? And uh, so I'm sitting there, and I'm crying, and I'm like, man, I always told him that I'd do this, and now I'm never going to get to do that. So I was sitting in a thing, and I'm looking at a sponsor, and I'm like, just do it. Just do a show. Right. You said you do it. Just do it. So I signed up for a show and I have like three months to prepare and I didn't because I didn't care about it. Right. <laughs> and uh, the week before the sponsor, David Lee, gets me in touch with Mike's wife, Carrie Jenkins, who now is Carrie Shaw. She's Brian Shaw's wife. Yeah. You guys know Carrie. Most likely you guys ran into her some sometime along the line. And so uh, he's like, hey, I got this guy who has no idea what he's doing. Can he come up to your gym and play the strongman equipment? And he's got a competition next week. So I go up to the gym and Carrie's like, I'm a CrossFit instructor, but I've seen them do this with the stones and these are farmer's handles. And so I like run through the competition events and I'm like, this is, this is lifting. I can do this. This isn't a big deal, right? So the next day or the next week I go to competition and um, it was in West Virginia. And luckily I was good enough to win the competition and uh, I got invited to nationals and I was kind of like, man, I didn't even like think one second about this thing. And I won first place. I'm going to wipe through nationals. Like this is my sport. I just found it. I'm going to be a world champion. I'm going to make millions of dollars. All world champions make millions of dollars. Strongman must uh, be the same. And, uh, oh, man. You know, so I, uh, I go, I don't really prepare too much. I go to nationals and get destroyed. Just absolutely destroyed. I was like, this isn't for me. This is not for me. Whatever. Like I was wrong. I was demoralized, like upset, you know, on the plane home. And on the plane home, I'm Maryland born and raised, still live in Maryland. So I'm like a Maryland boy, right? And I see on the plane that Maryland Strong's man, 2014, is coming up. And I'm like, it's in a week. It's literally like a week or two later. And I'm like, it would, that, that would matter to me more than winning the national championship at this point. Like, Maryland would matter to me. So I was like, this is it. If you do this and you do okay, maybe strong man. And if you don't, then this isn't for you, right? So I signed up for Maryland Strong's Man two weeks later. I won that, became Maryland Strong's Man. It was like such like an emotional thing for me, like this whole like Mike dying, whole full circle. And actually, strangely enough, at that Maryland Strong's Man, Brian Shaw was there and awarded me my medal. It was the first time I met Brian. Later, I would be at the Arnold with Brian and like train with Brian and doing all kinds of things. But like at the time, like it was like he was bigger than life. And you know what I mean? Uh, so it was, it was all really strange. And literally from there, I was like, well, uh, I quit my job. Uh, I just won two strongman competitions, got destroyed another, but I'm pretty sure I can get okay at this. I'm going to start a gym. And so then I started a gym literally my whole life. I had no intention of starting a gym. My whole life. I had no intention of being in counterterrorism. My whole life. I never intention of doing YouTube. It's just been like the next thing. And like the door opened and I was like, well, I'm kind of sick of what I'm doing. So I think I'm just going to walk through this and, and ride it and see what happens, you know? And like, I got a good work ethic. So I'm like, 
if you show up and you work hard, that's that's pretty much like ninety percent of you know Absolutely. making it. Yeah, that was a lot of talk. Sorry, fellas. No, no, man. <laughs> yeah, we love it, um, dude. This is I'm, I'm great. Uh, I mean, we ran past quite a few things. Um, <laughs> so uh, you'd said before, like people not, I mean, this is going back a, a little ways now, but you mentioned people when you're posting on Teen Nation, people weren't believing what you were posting as yeah. being, you think that was because you were putting your hat down or was it just they didn't, they just didn't believe oh, no, no, the no. numbers because they, they themselves maybe weren't capable. They, they didn't believe the numbers, right? Because at the time, back in like, you got to think this is probably like 2008, 2010, 2012. And at that time, if you were deadlifting 500 pounds in like a golds, you were a God among men. Like mm. you put 500 pounds on bar and the entire gym stopped, stopped running on treadmills and turn and look to see <laughs> what was going on. Because remember at that time, no one had a clue what was going on, right? Like right. Teen Nation was like the best source of very good. Like <clears throat> Teen Nation, you had like elite FTS and like, Bodybuilding forum and Maroon Day. That, that Maroon like Day forum was big industry. back then, huh? Maroon, Maroon Day forum was huge back then, right? Yeah, and like, but everyone, every, there were like these little pockets of information, but it wasn't like now, right? Like there wasn't like everyone knew. So like, uh, right. I I would be like, also I train differently than like most people do because, uh, I get really bored with uh, wasting time. I got a lot of energy, insomniac. I have to keep moving, mental problems. I have to keep driving, right? So in the gym, if you tell me to like squat and then like sit around for five minutes and then squat, I won't go back and squat. I won't go back. I'm like, I got a lot of things to take care of, none of which matter with squat, I gotta go, right? So it started out with me going like, I'm gonna do a bench press with like some ab things. And then I was like, well, I can do like an antagonistic muscle group with the bench press, it's not gonna hurt it. So I'm gonna do rows with the bench press, an ab thing, rest, go again, right? And then it came to do something ballistic. And that was my training just because I, I was doing like MMA at the time and like becoming like yeah. a bulky doing curls, like that's dumb for MMA, you shouldn't be doing this, you know what I mean? And uh, so I was training more with like circuit training, but still wanted to keep enough lifts that I kept like my my man muscles, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like 20 years old. I care. I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta still look okay. I'm going to be taking my shirt off for stuff, you know? <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, I was training like that. And on T nation, like guys were like, there is no way that you're doing like 10 burpee pull-ups to 10 reps of 500 deadlift to whatever resting nine seconds going again. I'm like, I promise you, I do this every day. That's what I do. And they're like, you don't do this. You don't do this. Finally, I'm like, fine. Like, let's go. Right. And, and so that, <laughs> was, and that guy, and uh, that went on until literally uh, it was like 2014, 2015, when I made the first video where I was actually speaking to the camera and then people cared. I didn't think people would ever care about yeah. what I actually had to say. I was like, I thought if I did like impress you guys, I'm sure you can relate. Like you'll do something physically that you were very impressed with. You're like, man, this Everyone's gonna love this one. Everyone's gonna love this one. And like, it's like, ma, ma. Yeah. Right? <laughs> cool. No one else thinks it's cool. So that that's been my whole YouTube experience. You know what I mean? It's just trial and error. Cause I'm not a cool kid. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, you're cooler than I am, clearly, by your following. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, dude, I get that all the time. Like, I, I'm everything that I think is cool. Like, nobody could give two shits about. I, I'm uh, with you. I live in the world with axes, man. Like, like I, I live a different life. Than I like mean, that's really else. cool, though. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, I, I, like, there's something like really primal, and um, yeah, just just being primal, living. I hate that word. I don't like that word because Liver King destroyed it. Like, completely <laughs> What's a primal? primal. <laughs> you ruined the word primal. God damn it, Liver Cream King. But like like that whole like um I don't know, let's we'll call it primal, but caveman, you know, archaic being self like the idea of self-sufficient uh living or living like a minimalist living style. Like there's like a lot um I mean it's kind of a romantic it's romanticized in a lot of ways. And it is. It has kind of a romantic kind of like um thing about it. 
that's really cool, man. And I, I mean, for me, I mean, we said it already, you know, I would, I would just fuck off if I could and just go out into the wilderness. Like that's my, my dream of, of living my life peacefully away from all of the, the stressors and um, like the mindless digital world, um, you know, and actually living, not existing. Right. So I think well, that's, see, that's really, I think it's amazing. But that's it, right? Because when you're when you're focused on the things that matter, right? Because like if the lights went out tomorrow, right? Like number one, the chaos that like if we don't have drink, like forget about food, forget about the internet, forget about that. Like we stop having drinking water. Like you guys have done a water cut, I'm sure. Like you're deep into a water cut, you become irrational, completely irrational. And like a world of that <laughs> is a world that I don't want to be part of. Yeah, uh, but like when when things actually get down to what matter, right? Like you think if everything turned off, right? Like you need to figure out how to get clean water for like cooking, cleaning, cleaning your clothes, cleaning your plates. Which means you need fire. Can you make fire with sticks? Can you make fire with a fair rod? Can you make fire with matches? Can you make like if you can't do these things, right? And these things end up taking so much of your time, just like collecting firewood, like do, doing all these things, so that like <clears throat> dumb stuff can't get in the way like uh like mark maram wrote that book like subtle art not giving an f right yeah and like it's like basically like we have too much time to care about stuff that doesn't matter and like yeah. you people would neglect their children for facebook but you know what i mean like it just shuts a shockingly bizarre time that we live in because it i a video like a couple videos ago right i got to go to this this farm and this farm had a tree that was 265 rings, so approximately 265 years old. And I got to buck the tree up for them. It was Solid. dead. It was taken down, right? Pretty pretty cool experience because that tree predates America. That means right. that, like, Revolutionary War, Civil War, like, that tree has seen so much history, so much world. And it was dead, right? And it got taken down. And I just chopped it up so the family could create firewood, right? That's all I did. And I lost so many subscribers because people were like, you just killed a tree that was older than America. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm like, oh do God. people know more about the Kardashians than you know about like the thing that provides you oxygen? Like it's right. insane to me what people focus on these days and can't do basic things, you know? Like I, I truly believe that if people took the time to just learn some basic, <clears throat> like for lack of a better term, primal skills, right? Like uh, how to make fire just with a ferro rod, just learn the process of walking around nature and identifying the difference between like dry firewood, dry tinder, dead wood, alive wood. You can eat that mushroom. You can eat that plant. You can do this. You can't do that. Mushrooms are hard though. I mean, mushrooms uh, are, uh, mushrooms can be a little difficult. And don't you forget. I said anything about mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you were going to die. I'm like, I, I'm, I don't, dude, don't I'm, a, I'm a that. huge like wild that. mushroom guy. And I'm like, <laughs> Be careful with that. Be careful. Yeah. Don't, don't do the muscle. <laughs> don't like, do the muscle. Buy those from other people. Don't. <laughs> Get not, them from someone you trust. There's some very, very trust. deadly mushrooms. Fungus yeah, because there there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of games, and apparently there are a lot of people who like think they know what they're talking about, do things, and then Dude. there's consequences. And I mean, mushrooms apparently are a big, a big. They kill more people than sharks. They do. They kill. You a lot know, of people everyone's afraid of sharks. Misidentification, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a few, right? I mean, I hate to change the subject, but I love mushrooms, man. I love wild mushrooms. Like, dude, that's like the thing that I loved when I go out in nature, man. It's like, like you're saying, I, I like to be able to identify edible, yeah. edible plants and mushrooms are just like, dude, there's something just wonderful about mushrooms, dude. I, they are. I love I mean, wild they, mushrooms. Like, but morels, like you can't, you can't fantastic. misidentify a morel, right? Um, yeah. You know, there's a couple of others out there, but dude. Dude, I love I, – that's the part of nature that I love, too, because um, I grew up uh, – you know, I did the whole, like, boy, like Cub Scout to Boy Scout thing. I grew up in rural America. I hunted and fished yep. and all that stuff. So outdoors is a huge part of my life. And, uh, yeah, and I agree with you 100%, man. Um, there's so many people down. that can't – what's that? Wait, like, like, when you say you go into, like, nature, like, most people go into nature and they're like, cool, we're going to hike. Let's go, like – Get the yeah. hike done. All right, we did three miles. Where are we going next? Let's go get ice cream or whatever. And like, but to slow down to actually like look at the tracks of an animal yeah. or try to identify plants or like trees or dry tinder or stuff like that, it literally 
it takes your world that is like this big and moving this fast and it it all takes it down to like a microchasm where you can take an entire afternoon and stare into like a foot by foot section of like <laughs> ants doing stuff and be like this has been going on all the time yeah. or like lay down and look at the sky like you haven't done it since you were a kid <laughs> right and you'll be like oh man this happens this happens every night like there's a sunset there's shooting star like you know what I mean? There's like, people that haven't seen stars in their entire life living in. I, I will never forget, uh, you know, leaving rural rural America for the first time that I ever traveled for work. Um, yeah, I worked like some like laborious construction, uh, <laughs> cable route construction job. But I ended up in in Houston, Texas, of all places. And I remember we met these girls and and um, they pointed up. And they're like, oh, the star's out. The star. The star is out. And I'm like, what do you mean the star? Like, the star. Like, it's the only star in the sky. And I'm like, dude, have you never been outside of Houston? Like, there's like a bazillion stars in the sky. The star's out. The star is out. No, I think it's interesting. Recently, I've been turning my phone just to grayscale unless I'm like uploading videos or need something that I see color in. And it's weird once you get used to that, because then when you go outside, I found myself recently, I was sitting outside and I got distracted by just watching the tree because I was like, my phone's just black and white feels like a newspaper. And I was like, huh, the trees, like, it's real nice looking, like looking at all the leaves and stuff. And it's interesting once you start to slow things down and see like the rest of the world but it's like our phones are made with artificially bright colors of like and even this video is like you need bright colors to bring people in and stuff and it's weird because you realize like once you take that away how exciting things are out there and stuff like there is so much to do so that's why i really it was crazy to like watch your channel become like a bushcraft channel like what felt like overnight to go be like yeah. oh he used to do his giant sets of like what are we gonna see like 250 pound sandbag shoulder for like 20 reps and then some sort of crazy run and then it's like oh we're gonna make homemade burritos out of like all these ingredients and yeah. i was like oh this is something very different i did I, like, I still don't know where i'm going right and yeah. it killed my channel my channel was continually oh, climbing, yeah. and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to make the videos that I want to make, and that was a mistake. <laughs> that, was, that was not the thing to do. Uh, but I, I don't care at this point, right? At this point, I'm like, I'm a journeyman when it comes to this, this like social media thing. Like, I've got people who like me. i got people who hate me. But for the most part, like, I'm, I'm a middle-of-the-road guy, and I'm going to, like, eke out a, a living at this as long as I'm allowed to. You know what I mean? And uh, so with that, I, I literally, if I feel like making, if I feel like taking a week and building a survival shelter, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to record the whole thing and then put it up on YouTube and 2000 people are going to watch it. And I could have literally taken a video of me eating food and more people would have watched it. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a video that I want to make. There's a niche out there for that, though. Um, there is. I mean, there's it's channels true. on TikTok that I run across once in a while that, that that's like that. The guys will build, like, go up and just cook next to a to a stream, right? Or yep. they're they're building log cabins or whatever it is, or doing survivalist mm -hmm. stuff, and they have millions of followers. Millions. I was hoping to kind of tap into that. It didn't really hasn't <laughs> hasn't happened for me yet. Yeah. But maybe but, well, like you said in the beginning, yeah, it's, though. It's, it's, like you said in the beginning, it took you a, a while, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're starting kind of a new niche and so it may possibly be, you know, take some time for that to, to take off too. But I mean, there's a huge, um, chunk of the market out there that, that loves that kind of stuff too. I really, uh, at this point, like I have over 800 videos and I've, I've said, not that I'm not continuing to learn, but, uh, when we moved to my new house in 2020, when COVID hit, like right before COVID hit, uh, April 3rd, 2020, we moved into uh, the wilderness and uh, I lost TV, lost real internet. Uh, so I never saw one news broadcast about the COVID virus. I literally don't know anything about politics, what's going on. I know nothing, right? I am blind to all of it. If I go over to like a, a relative's house and there's TV on the background, we'll be talking and suddenly I'm like, huh? Like it like draws me in. There's like a Taco Bell commercial. I'm like, there's TV, right? Like 
mother, sweet, you know, like, you know, and uh, it, 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 it's been so different stepping away from that. But like, um, the, the reason why I say that is like, I have like 800 videos now and I haven't been able to keep up with the fitness, um, fitness videos now, not that I'm trying to like bash anybody or say anything, but like, we're so far into the minutia of stuff that like 99.99% of the lifters will never, ever be good enough to need, right? Like, most a, amen, keep speaking, brother. Right? And, I'm and like so with like, you on this. <laughs> but that cut out kind of, like in 2020, it's kind of when all that really started hammering. And now it's like, you can't say like, I want to do a bicep curl without having like 20 studies to show you the best angle and everything. And I'm like, goodness, this is different than when I grew up. You know what I mean? <laughs> And um, but I didn't keep up with that, and I'm I'm kind of glad that I didn't, because I like to keep things simple, right? Yeah. And I don't want my channel just talking about something that I learned on someone else's channel about like the right, correct, whatever. And so, I don't have a whole lot of more things to say about like the squat. I I 20 squat videos. I have 20 overhead press videos. I'm like, I don't know what else I have to say. Like if I if I figure something out that I don't believe anymore and I want to change, I'll absolutely address that. But like, I'm not going to make the same video that I made five years ago just to get more views and some more programs and do stuff. And so like my video production, it, it it's like the Simpsons, like how many episodes can you make? Right. Like at least they get downtime for what, like seven years, eight years or whatever, like <laughs> yeah. every single week you needed to put out X amount of videos, you know? And uh, th at this point, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. So like, here's a survival shelter. <laughs> like Here's a. Yeah. Uh, Here's something that I'm interested in. If you're interested in it, cool. If not, like, I wouldn't have made a video. So it's it's something for those of you who want a video. But, like, man, I, I just don't know what else to really talk about that I've, I haven't already covered. And I'm really not interested in more minutia, man. Like, it, I think if, like, my big problem with, like, something like religion is that people will take something like the entire Bible and try to apply the whole thing when, like, they need to pay attention, like the red letters and like the like love each other and like help each other out and like be cool, right? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff is the important stuff. And you can kind of whatever the other stuff. Same thing with lifting. Like for most people, like these are the basic things like you need to know. And all that other stuff, things can always get more complicated. But if you are not doing your stuff because you have so much analytical knowledge of like the correct way or your heels need to be this or that or it's like, man, when I went in, literally, it was like, you went in and you asked the biggest dude around in like the baggiest sweatshirt that squatted the most. And you're like, how do you get strong? And he's like, eat a bunch of lunch meat and squat. And you're like, yes, sir. That's what we did. <laughs> right? Drink milk, eat lunch meat and squat. And that's what we did, right? And we got strong. And now the people that everyone used to look up to are like, man, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about because he is not doing the face pull at the correct. He's, he's not using enough six syllable words. Right, right. Yeah. And I'm like, when, when I became a personal trainer, that I began, I got out of college, and uh, my degree, I, I never studied anything about kinesiology or, or physical anything, right? Uh, but I, I was into lifting. I had a lot of evidence of my own lifting and working with people. So I became a personal trainer because they didn't know what I wanted to do yet. And I quickly learned that you can sell a certain type of person by being like, your vastus intermedius and your, you know, like, like using all the big terms and stuff like that, but all it does, it just makes you a douchebag, right? Yes, I agree. Because the smartest people in the world take complex things and make them simple. They don't take simple things and make them complex. Douchebags do that. Yeah, that, I agree. Like there's a time and a place, that. right? There's a time and a place for that. And that's academics, right? It's academics. This, yes. this is the academics. This is where you want to start talking about the minutia and getting into the, the science and, you know, using your complex language, right? Because you need to be explicit in science when you're that's talking specific. with a client, right? Meat potatoes, nuts and bolts. That's all your they need. works. Your hamstring works, right? Like, they don't need yeah. to know. And I've said that many times just as an athlete. Like, that was one of the things that probably uh, drove me. Like, I'm, I'm self-taught for the most part. I did all my own programming for many, many years. And one of the reasons that I avoided coaching was because I noticed that very early on. That when I started talking to coaches, they wanted to, like, they were trying to, like, uh, baffle me with bullshit. 
is what it felt yeah. like, right? And yeah. it's like, I, I get it, man. I, you don't need right. to tell me that stuff. Like, I, I just want you to help me get, like, turn my weaknesses into strengths. I don't need to know, like, that you're intelligent, right? I need to know that you're effective. Right. Period. I completely agree. I completely, it's like the people who, like, talk to you on social media and they're like, hey, I can get you a million followers, but they have, like, 500 followers. And you're like, well, why don't – But it's like that classic, like, would you hire a coach – who isn't like strong and it's a tough it's a tough question because you're like there are a ton of super intelligent 100 pound dudes out there right sure. that said if you haven't been under 700 pounds squatting i don't know how i would ever explain that to another person who hasn't been under 700 pounds squatting sure right because like when you're passing out because of pressure and stuff i'm like i need to know from a coach when they're like, well, you got a set of five of that. I'm like, look, look, man, like I understand like for like 95 for a person who's doing 315, that's one thing. But like everything changes, right? And I need to know that you understand that, that you've been there and you've done that. So it, that's a tough question. You know what I mean? That's a controversial question. <laughs> that, that is yeah. actually. It is controversial because, I mean, the truth is, is that there are some really great coaches out there that have not achieved as much as their athletes. Sure. Um, I mean, it's through a lot of sports, but I'm with you. Um, certainly, like kind of the trend I've noticed over the last few years, probably since 2020, maybe 19, is that in the sport of strongman specifically, and you probably see it in other sports, but there's these guys that come out and do one competition in strongman and suddenly they're strongman coaches, <laughs> right? And it's like, <laughs> like you know, um, like novices don't know any better, but I'm like, I, I keep saying like, you, you have to understand, like, if you're going to another novice to coach you, your expectation expectations can't be very high because you're not going to achieve a whole lot learning from somebody that hasn't achieved a whole lot. Right. I totally agree. Or at least somebody that you see putting in the work and doing it right. Like there's so many coaches that you see like that talk, but aren't actually putting out like videos of them doing stuff or videos of them failing or videos of them, whatever. Like it's always, it's always like a, a wrapped up box of, of whatever that, that gets shown. And like, I, do you guys know, uh, there's a guy named Goob. I just found out about Oh yeah. He's, he's here in Austin. He hangs out. Macaroni, that dude's awesome. like, <laughs> the way that he just grabs people and like, he's like, well, this dude's fake. This dude's fake. This dude's fake. I'm like, Oh, no one can be trusted, man. He's hot. He's awesome to a point. And I, I just want to make this point on air because he's got in trouble for like kangaroo court style, like mob justice always takes down the, the innocent with the guilty. You got to be careful of that shit. man. That's true. That's very, that's a very good point. That's a yeah. very level headed. See, this, yeah, this is why we need Darren on the show. <laughs> he's because all the time I like be about to like, talk about something and he's like he's like no let's just like wait it out because i think after a while a part of it i think some of it does need to be done but a part of it it's like hopefully people's common sense could see some of these people are just paying i mean it questions. does i mean i mean certainly yeah. like but that's that's the thing with like uh mobs always start off with a good right. a, a really right. good um agenda or whatnot right but as the mob grows and that my, that mob mindset takes over, it gets very boxed in and just like one sided you're and right. it starts trampling over too many people. And so you got to be right. really careful if you're going to be that person or be that in that you're group. Right. You've got to be very cognizant of how you proceed forward that you don't end up, like I said, becoming a kangaroo court, which most almost every mob becomes. You're right. Right. And, right. and taking down the innocent with the guilty, like, and I'm, I'm kind of saying backwards of what uh, Maynard and Tool says, right, in, in the pot, right? <laughs> the guilty with the innocent, right? Because um, that's the hypocrisy, right? That moms You're right. You invariably right. Like, find themselves in. And, so, you know, like, being on the other side of that is, like, a truly dangerous place to be. Because, like, if you have different opinions for people and you get a little, like, whatever on the internet, it's whatever, but, like, when a mob comes at you, like that's, that's, I, I like, depending on what you've done, right? Like there's some things that are like worth whatever, but like for the most part, like if you're like a chick who like 
put in her waist or whatever. And like, he's like, oh, look, the thing's curved or whatever. Like for a mob to come after somebody like that, it can be rough, like really rough yeah. on like a person. Like, yeah, and I, I know, know people are like, oh, they put themselves out there, but like you do and you don't, right? Like the, I, I'm 42 years old and I get bullied like I'm in middle school. Like people are like, I hate you, <laughs> I hate your face. I'm like, what's wrong with my face? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like there's the, the, the world is mean. And like, if, if like one person jumps on it, like you said, and there's a mob mentality, when everyone jumps on it, like it can be, it can wreck a lot of people's, like yeah. there, there can be a lot of mental anguish goes on with that. The, the mob yeah. has a, a failure of of logic typically, right? I mean, when people just jump into it and they're just, they get so involved, logic yeah. goes out the door. People stop thinking because they let the mob think for them, right? Right, and collective and effervescence. The, like people, exactly, exactly. They don't see how it piles up. It's kind of like if if someone were to kick me in the shins, that's nothing. But right. if a thousand people want to each take their kick, that's going to add up. Like, it's interesting to realize that, like, I don't, like, no normal or sane person would ever trample on someone if they're just by themselves. Like, you wouldn't no. knock someone on the ground or just keep stepping on them. But yeah. groups of people do that. And they'll My be like, I only stepped on them once. It's like, but 600 people did it. And, and that so is like, why we're supposed to be yeah. a nation of laws, right? So yeah. that the mob does not get justice because if the mob, mob justice is no justice, right? Mob is, yeah. is vigilante uh always right it, it it just does what it does and you know uh but you can't control people of course but that's like me just going back to john and i've had this conversation many times i i avoid i avoid mobs i avoid um anything that's that's usually popular i mean just going back to like <laughs> like i do i really do because like when i see like stuff on on social media and i'm going to use like the black lives matter blackout thing right it turned out at the end that it, it, that nobody was using it as it was initially originally intended which was supposed no. to be a blackout of social media right not a, a virtue signaling post to say like i'm um, whatever but it right? changed like that everybody used it wrong <laughs> used it wrong like everyone assumed like you you thought something if you did and it was like like that, that was that was a weird moment. That was a weird social media moment. But there's right. been many of them like that, right? And people yeah. jump on these like these trends that have they come out of nowhere. Nobody nobody knows the roots or where it started. It's just got a fancy name or a fancy like title or you know phrase associated with it. And it's like, oh, this is a good cause. Or I'm going to do this because I want everybody to know that I'm a good person. But in the end, you're like you're all a bunch of assholes or like just idiots because you didn't even know what the the original intention was. You just jumped on a bandwagon that that was the best part because they were like oh you're supposed to have helpful hashtags and resources but hashtags are useless if too many people use them like when you use hashtag deadlift you're not gonna find like it's just a mountain of things and it's funny because during that time my wife andy who's black i was like are you gonna put the black square up she's like no i don't post anything on social media ever like her her only post of 2020 was one giving me a haircut and two was tested <laughs> positive for straight up not having a good time, bro. That was her two <laughs> social media amazing. posts for all of 2020. And they're just like That's the best, awesome. but it was that thing of like realizing that it gets weird. Like even if it's a good cause and everything, like if it's not it controlled, because you have stories of like charities suddenly, like if you get too much and it overwhelms your staff and you can't distribute everything, it just ends up with this massive trouble of like, it's crazy. Man, it, it's so crazy how like growth can destroy things, right? Like yeah. something that starts out good that it gets you big. Even even like at my gym, like it started out like it, it was very grassroots and like it was like a beautiful thing. And then as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, get like you couldn't control the the stuff and then quality goes down, right? And like you can't take something you love and watch the quality go down and, and not like get angry or, or be frustrated. You know, it just, it, you guys are right. I never thought we'd be talking about all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I know. I was like, we don't, we don't like usually get into like, <laughs> like sensitive, like political stuff. And, and I'm not trying to get into political. I'm, I'm just trying to make a point of like, like mob mentality. Like it's so you're right though. You have to be careful. And, and my, my, um, MO is always when there's a mob starts. I don't care what the what the message is. 
I just avoid it. Like on all sides, because I know invariably it's going to, it's going to get me in trouble. They're going to do something wrong. They're going to hurt the wrong people. And I, I just like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Or, you know, at the end, almost every time I look back and I'm like, man, I'm glad that I didn't jump on that. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he stops me from doing it all the time. Like it's I crazy. I feel enlightened now. I feel like I've learned something here today, gentlemen. And I, I go to Mark's fork in my life and be like, I'm not joining either team. No team. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I'm like, Times True like, open mindedness yeah. is having the ability to separate yourself from everything and stand back, right? In my opinion, it's just my yeah. opinion is stand back and observe and wait and see what really truly happens and then make a decision. You can never make a decision without having enough information, right? Yes. You can never have enough information to make a decision. And every generation thinks that their mobs are not like the mobs of the past. They'll be like the Salem witch trials. They were just crazy groups of people like this. Like we're all on the same page yeah. about this. And Communism, man. It's going to work this time. <laughs> but I think the, the main thing is realizing that there's always a lot more nuance. And Darren will always tell me, he's like, if there's legal grounds for what Goob is stating, the law is going to take care of it. Yep, and if true. there aren't legal grounds, then what are we talking about? Like after a while, part of it's like, so it was an interesting thing to think about. Like the USPA, they went down justifiably and everything, like when there's a history of that. But I think after a while, sometimes it can be a little bit weird when you're like, because the internet bullying is that same mob of like, they'll be like, oh, just like I said a rude comment to this person or called them a name. But it's just me. And it's like, but everyone's doing that. You have 15,000 people say that. And they're like, well, this person has a million followers. Why would they care? It's like being called a bitch by a thousand people feels like a lot. Right. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't some people, right? I'm sure like. Hopefully. I, I'm, I'm sure like The Rock gets called names and he's like, whatever, I'm The Rock, right? But like, like I'm I'm just a normal dude to make some videos, man. Like, like if you see me on the street, I'm, I'm the same dude. You know what I mean? And like if you, if you call me out on the street, like. You know, it's it just, it's so strange, like being part of this world where we have to deal with this. And like, especially since yeah. you don't know what you're dealing with, right? Like it, if like one of you said something, I'd be like, man, like these are intelligent people who like have like knowledge I should think about. Like, like what you like right there where I was like, man, that dude's awesome. And you're like, you know, you should think about this. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I should be teachable. Like I, I should, I should listen and like want to like hear a bit. I think we all need to do more of that, you know? Was and, it uh, was it Plato who said, um, I know I'm intelligent because I know that I don't know anything? Yes. And I'll be honest, too often I I will plant my flag in the ground and be like, no, giant sets are the way. Or no, we spot the cancer. We do that. Like, just because I have a video on it and I have to like yeah. defend my video and defend my point. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like, stuff changes all the time. You were saying new stuff back in the day, and now people are saying, like, New stuff, it, stuff just changes, right? Like, and uh, so I, I'm really trying hard now to not be so like defensive about everything and like whatever, because it's easy, right? That's that's like the easy thing online. Like, what do you mean? Like, da da da, like that. And you're like, man. But, but at the it, same time, like, like people online, like they like, they they tend to gravitate towards the people that have very strong convictions on certain subjects right sure. um and if you get if you're not convicted and like me i'm i have like very few convictions on on lifting for instance because my number one answer to almost everybody is well it kind of depends right <laughs> it kind of depends <laughs> like really like, for everything really i could tell you i could tell you everything that that has worked for me but I can't guarantee it's going to work for you. And my best advice is for you to go get a bunch of advice from a lot of people and put it together and make, figure out what works best for you. That's like that, that's like my number one answer with fitness, right? Start the experiment in twenty. And nobody's going to listen to me because I have not given anybody a straight answer. <laughs> 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 There's no substance in my answer for them to go like, oh, aha, I'm going to go do that. They're like, oh, fuck, now I have to. I have more questions. Right? I'm going to start to go you find another YouTube answer. Channel. Oh my God! Like so today, squats. Well, like yeah. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> but figure figure it. It. People do like the strong opinions, though. And it's like, that's the we funny do. thing is like we, we our do. channels caught that. But all the time, like I'll like say a really strong opinion, like in our group chat. And Darren will be like, let's wait. Like, let's let's see it out. Like, there's another thing. And it's funny what? to think of like 
this idea of like you said he's like i don't like anything that's popular and everything like but there is something to that of kind of like a wait and see mentality because a part of it it's like the rule of law like laws matter because like it's kind of like impartiality like impartiality is easy when it's a cut and dry case but like the whole point of impartiality and justice is the fact that you need to have an open mind for both sides and i think oftentimes people will think this idea of like kind of like briefly to get political but like free speech only matters when it's uncomfortable if free speech only protects comfortable thoughts we wouldn't need it it's the same with justice if justice only protected obviously innocent people you wouldn't need it but it's like there needs to be a wait and see so it's funny because all the time i'll have like a strong opinion about something and darren will be like wait and see unless we're arguing about searchers that's like the one thing <laughs> that we can go back and forth on a whole afternoon but I'm not, because... like but still my answer is like dude you can't be so one like one-sided and like you know what i mean and so like narrow sighted because it's there's so much there is i mean there is a it's lot the of most functional when it comes movement. down to like it's functional but is it for everybody yeah, well that's a that's a debate but it's so useful to have someone who is always like, well, really, are, are you seeing both sides of this? Because too many times people only surround themselves with people who are like, yeah, what you said, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, then you just, it becomes like a mob, right? And yep. like, you need someone to be like, man, I don't know about this. I think maybe we should think twice before we start that fire, you know? And mm -hmm. like, uh, everyone needs those people in their lives. So like, man, even like in this situation where like, th like I th this is awesome, right? Because it, <laughs> it, it, it's a learning experience. And like too many times, especially on podcasts, people just try to keep driving. Like, no, no, no. I said, I need to keep driving. And like too many, you don't see people really stop and be like, you know, it's a really, that's a really good point. Like I, I take back everything I just said, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm the same, even with people towards me. I tell people all the time because people don't naturally do this, but I tell my people in my closest circle, I'm like, hold me accountable, man. It's okay. If I'm doing something wrong, just tell me now because I'd rather know like, cause, cause we can all be oblivious to doing, you know, things that maybe upset our, our friends, our family. Um, and it's better to know, like, and just swallow your pride up front and be able to resolve the issue then have somebody like go in and and let it fester right and ruminate on it and get mad just tell me let's solve it right now uh because i'm going to do the same for you uh right. if you're doing something that i don't appreciate i'm going to tell you right now because i don't want to go home and ruminate on it and have, let it fester and have it ruin our relationship let's just solve it right now and so there's all those kind of little things like i'm, I'm a big fan too of and i'm and I know I'm different from a lot of people. Like I always tell like my friends and stuff, like, don't worry about hurting my feelings. Cause I only have one. Um, <laughs> I only have one. Like, feeling. like, like <laughs> don't, don't, don't fill my head full of bullshit. Like if I'm training, especially for a big show, don't right. tell me that I'm doing like, Oh, you're so awesome. Like, you you're gonna for sure it. win. Like, no, don't fucking tell me that. Yeah. I want to know that I have to do better. If yeah. I want to win, you got to do better. Be yep. real with me. You're right. I mean, like in straw man, everyone has beards, right? So like if you had like <laughs> food in your beard and like your friend was hanging out with you all afternoon with like whatever, and he didn't tell you that you had food in your beard and he found out about it, he'd be so pissed at you, right? He'd be like, yeah. I'm still there's food in my beard. And then he's gonna go home and be like, How many people, how stupid did I look? Because my friend, you know, like if someone's doing something stupid and you care about them, you gotta tell them, right? I perfect like, story how many times of college could you have stayed out of trouble or like college years could you stay out of trouble if your buddy was like hey man you should probably should stop drinking now you should probably stop talking to those people now like come yeah. with me young man you know but like right. like in that's you're right man you guys are it's, right the funniest <laughs> thing is about that story is that one time i was working at domino's and it's like three in the afternoon and this group of construction workers comes in and the guy who's like gonna pay for it and everything i like get, sometimes can be a little bit socially awkward and just say exactly what i'm thinking and i like i looked at him and i was like hey like your total is 42 dollars 69 cents and your flies down by the way and he was like he looked at his friends and he was like 
Dude, I haven't gone to the bathroom in an hour and a half. My flies been down this whole time and no one told me. He was like, thanks for telling me. me. Yeah, but he was he was like, why'd the Domino's guy tell me? Right. He was like, he was like, we literally haven't stopped for anything in 90 minutes. And it's been like this the whole time. And it's funny because like he I was like, yeah, I'm, I was like, I'm sorry, that was super awkward, but like I'll always tell strangers when their flies are down on me. Yeah. It's just like mentally Dude, that's appreciated, man, when somebody yeah. says something it's, like that. That's yeah, super and it's funny because like everyone was like, everyone mm-hmm. else they were like, I didn't want to make you feel awkward. And the guy he was like, I feel more awkward with my dick out this whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. He was like, why? But it, it was interesting to think about that. This idea that a lot of times as humans, we don't like discomfort. But the weird thing is we'll avoid an uncomfortable conversation, but we'll deal with the massive discomfort that's behind it the whole time of like, you don't want to make your friend feel bad about their fly being down. So you'll deal with them being uncomfortable and like, you know, everyone else knows. And it's the same with like, other things of like lifting if like recently in a therapy session my therapist thought it was a bit controversial but i was like people don't grow without criticism like if you tell me i'm doing good at everything of like part of why i started this new job is that my last job everyone thought i was awesome all the time and i was like i'm not learning anything like i'm good at my job but like i want to go somewhere where people are like Dude, you're kind of you kind of suck at this. Like, <laughs> like you need to read a book. And it was interesting to think this idea the same with lifting and so many things of like taking that analytical mind of like thinking I need to actually like have criticism and everything. You don't necessarily need mob criticism, but with your friends and people, like if you notice something, I'd much rather be told this. Like, I'd much rather be told oh my God, my form was terrible on that squat before I post it and the whole internet tells me and I, my friend didn't want me to feel bad. So I was like, oh, you didn't want me to feel bad. So you told me it was okay. And now I have 15 people who just commented under my Instagram reel being like, oh my God, this sucks. And I'm like, well, now I feel way worse because I had 15 people tell me. Thanks for, for saving my feelings. This, though, for everyone yeah. watching this, if, if you want your criticism... He's going to come to you and say, hey, friend, please, I want your criticism because unwarranted criticism oh, yeah. isn't oh, always yeah. good, right? But like, no, definitely. It's important to go to your to you, like your friends, your close friends, and be like, hey, like you said, like keep me accountable, right? Like if I'm not hitting depth on my squat, don't tell me I'm good if I'm not good. Like that is not helping. That is enabling me. Like yeah. if I was an alcoholic, you'd be handing me a beer right now. Like I'm not getting better if you're not holding me to a certain standard. So I'm I'm asking you as my friend to hold me that standard so that we can get better, right? And you're not going to hurt my feelings. And that becomes like a safe area for you guys to like go into. And then he's like, you asked me to do this. If you get mad at me, like, I'm not going to do this. You asked me to do this, right? Like, because yeah. you're going to, there's going to be that time, you know? But I, I think that's so important. If anyone wants to grow and like, you're with like your lifting buddies or whatever buddies and like, whatever, if you want to get better at anything, if you don't have someone literally watching your reps or your whatever and going, that was pretty good. You had some good stuff, but next time try this, do that, whatever. That's how you get better, right? Unless you have a video camera and you are looking at every single rep and self analyzing, you're able to do that. You're a good enough coach to be like, well, that was dumb and honest enough with yourself to be like, I, I need to do Zercher squats instead of whatever, you know, like, uh, like all those things that's a tough thing. And it's a lot easier to just have an honest conversation with your friend than it is to deal with the internet, deal with mm-hmm. whatever, like, man, well, that is a good point though. The unsolicited 100%. feedback. Cause people love to do that. And it's like yes, unsolicited yes. feedback, like my flies down. I appreciate that. Unsolicited <laughs> feedback. Like my dad <laughs> sucks. Like that's like kind of like a man rule though. I mean, anytime yeah. you meet another man, it flies down. You should let him know. Yep. It flies down. Like, Absolutely. It's like boogers yeah. in your nose. You're like, Hey man, you got boogers in your nose. Like, right? like, exactly. oh, that's the most awkward part of YouTube is realizing yeah. like when you're on camera, those times where you like suddenly notice, Did like you, you have to that? get a nose hair trimmer because you like, ever oh. see that meme of that chick taking a selfie of her and she's like a turd in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's funny though, before, before we did this thing and I was checking like the camera stuff, like before I came into the, the meeting, I'm up there going like, like looking at the camera and I'm like, I bet these dudes are just looking at me being like, what an idiot. 
Like what I needed to like. This is the thing, man. I'm not that observant of people. Like I, honestly, I I'm just like. I mean, I, like if I see something, I'll usually say something. But I'm like, I'm never trying to pick anybody apart. Like I, I'm the yeah. kind of person that's like, your character speaks loudly, right? No matter who you are. And if I'm going to judge you on anything, it's going to be on your character. If you're you're you have good character, you're a good human being. Like and that's how you present yourself. You know, you're uh, logical, intelligent, respectful. Really, respectful probably comes first. Um, that's I, I'm not I'm not going out and sizing people up and looking them up and down for for flaws. So <laughs> I also don't understand like when people put up like their squat, for instance, like we use that as an example. Like when people put that up, that is basically like them being like a five year old putting up their little like painting to their mom being like look <laughs> look i've worked so hard for this and people were like Dah! and it's so yeah. harsh man i'm like if you don't like it just scroll on or exit out like <laughs> why do you have to say something like, yeah you know it's not good he i'm sure he knows he's not like arnold right i'm, but, I'm pretty sure he understands like but he's trying <laughs> like why do you got to say something? Like Some I people are pretty understand. harsh, man, for no reason. I agree. And, and, and uh, I've had this conversation before, too. Like, the guys that go on, um, I think it was, I think Deadly, uh, Mark on Deadliest Lift had posted something kind of around this point was, like, why do people have the, the um, what makes them think that they need to post on somebody's gym lift? No lift. <laughs> Like, who fucking cares, man? It's a gym lift. Right. Like, <laughs> what an asshole. Like, right. Like, what well, cares? Good you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I think he was the one who had the good comment where I'm pretty sure it was Mark or Deadly Slift. Was one of those guys, he was like, if you're the kind of person who says no lift under someone's internet video, I can guarantee you, you've never deadlifted over 700 pounds. <laughs> like, I can guarantee you, I've never That's seen true. someone who deadlifts over 700 pounds. Who I mean, I don't think you're going to, you probably can't deadlift weight your way out of a wet paper bag if you make that comment. <laughs> I mean, if we're honest, I don't know anyone who's any good that does that, right? Yeah. I don't know. I never see like a strong person be like, blah, 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 that, that sucked. And, uh, I, you know, I, I just never see it. It's always, I don't it's know. Because, it's because we've all lived through it, right? I mean, absolutely yeah. none of us when we started was our form good. Absolutely none of us <laughs> was strong, good. right? Like, um, we there were so many errors. Like, I'm learning to throw right now because I've I'm kind of trying to like learn new things. I've been yeah. going through like weightlifting and throwing now um for Highland games, and I'm like, I'm a total newbie, right? I'm like, my form sucks, my distances suck everything and it just reminds so me of going exciting. all the way to the very beginning <laughs> he loves of it. lifting and and it's like it's whole journey starting over again yeah and but but like we've all lived through that and we know but that's a nice thing this time is you know when you first start you're worried you know, there's kind of like there's always this like what is a good like what's a good lift for my weight class or for this lift and right. all this stuff and but now i'm like i know like i know i'm gonna start slow and there's going to be a lot of challenges to work through, and it doesn't matter, right? You're learning, and that's what everybody needs to understand. That all, like everybody that's starting out, is learning. When I learn, everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, has to go through that process. And so it is like going back to like posing those dumb douchey comments on people's poses. Like it's just it's just asshole to the extreme. But the hard part is like. Uh... For instance, my, my parents aren't fit people, right? That's all I'm going to say. They're not fit people, right? Yeah. But they don't go to the gym. And one of the reasons why they don't go to the gym is because my mom in particular doesn't feel comfortable because she's like, I don't look like everyone else. Everyone's going to look at me. Everyone's going to make fun of me. And I'm like, no one cares. No one cares. The only people who do care are going to look at you and be like, good for her. She's, she's in there getting it, right? No one's looking at you like, oh my gosh. So like, no one does that, right? However, the internet does not support <laughs> that thesis, right? Like, right. Like, like you look at the internet and like, so, oh my gosh, you're so disgusting. What you, you should go kill yourself. And you're like, oh my gosh. Like, so, how can you say this to a human being? Like, I don't understand. And like, so, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Like, but that's, that's the world that like, if you decide to jump into social media, like, you got to be ready for it, right? It's the internet in general. Like the internet has, has has generalized like the small percentage of 
of negativity in the world to like the entire population. And it's like, there's so many things, right? And, and that's what it is. When you see that negativity, it's such a small, like minority of people. I gotta believe that. That have, gotta believe that. <laughs> have too much of a, a platform to speak because, because I think you're right. I think the vast majority of people, I mean, I don't know how many gyms there are in the, in the world or in the United States, but let's say it's a hundred thousand, right? And there's one person in every one of those gyms. It's a hundred thousand people that could be on the internet speaking negatively about one person, right? I mean, yeah. the likelihood of that happening on one post is, is slim, but, but that's the reality of the internet, right? right. It's like, you might, it may be like a fraction of 1% of people at one specific gym. So yeah, you walk into the gym, nobody cares. There's that one guy that, that probably will never say anything to your face, but you right. get him on the internet with the other hundred thousand. And they're like, they're like, they think they're impervious, right? They're invincible right. and they go out and do their douchiness and, and they the make, thing, and, and then, then people generalize and think like, Oh, everybody's looking at me. And that's everyone's thinking that about negativity me. Negativity of the internet. Be, that's why I'm envious but, of you living with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's human. Come, out, come out, man. Come yeah. Come. I, I knew <laughs> this whole episode. I was like, I was like, Darren was like, what are we going to talk about? I was like, there is so much. Like, was, <laughs> we haven't even got to like my story story. Yet, I know. Right? I know. We yeah, kind of like went off on a political story. kind of so, like. Okay. But, uh, I'm happy about it, man. I learned yeah. something. I, I really like. I'm always happy to talk to intelligent people who like. Because a, a lot like there's a lot of like, yes, man, stuff that goes on. And when someone's like, you know, well, let me challenge you on that for a second. Like to me, I'm like, hey. We we're gonna learn today. We're 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 gonna talk through something, which is awesome. Like that doesn't happen enough. I, I commend you guys for actually. Yeah. Be more Darren's like that. the that first was, person. That was to totally be like. That was totally snack. organic. That was unintentional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We went, went off topic. <laughs> but I think the main thing is, as humans, because of evolution, if you had a bad experience, you were supposed to remember it because that's how we survive as a species. But we no right. longer have life or death situations, so. But what that is bias it? still things, exists. That bias, like, because technically for every negative experience you have, you have to have like seven positive experiences to offset it. So we're used to like pattern recognition. It doesn't matter if there's tons of sticks in the grass, you're going to notice the one snake in the grass. Like your mind's supposed to do that. So it's interesting when mentally, a lot of times people talk about the internet being terrible. If I remember our first reels that got like, 20 some thousand views i kind of got scared because i was like oh my god we're gonna have an army of assholes and no one was there like the only time we've ever made people mad was darren saying that that weight class strongmen are baby monster trucks he was like i'd rather watch real monster trucks and that's like our one controversial moment was like but, it's but it turned out to positive it did it did we had two shirts now but you know you, got, you guys are right about that though because like really my community, I will say, like, my community on YouTube is so positive and so supportive of me. Like, I can't say anything bad about them. There's some people, and honestly, most of the time, there are people who just kind of, like, jump in and say something, and they're back out, right? Or, like, it popped up on recommended, and they're like, this guy talked too fast, this guy's a jerk, whatever. And here's the thing. Like, I here, like here's stuff that people didn't know. Back, I used to talk, I talk fast anyway, right? Because I get excited. I'm an excitable guy. But, like... In the videos, it's passion. It's passion. It's passion, right? It comes out. Yeah. And in the videos, I would talk so fast, but people didn't realize it was because I was so sick and I was trying not to throw up. So I would literally be like, -da 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 -da, cut, ah, and then be back, right? But no one knew that was going on. And so I get stuff like, you're such a, why do you talk so fast? You're a jerk, blah, blah, blah. Why is your voice like that? And the whole time I'm literally dying. And I'm like, I wish that I could just, explain to the world you know what i mean like that feeling misrepresented or like whatever is like such an easy thing to do on on social media because people just pop in they get a little taste to you and then they make an opinion they post it and they're gone and like you live with their opinion because they, they said it right yeah. whereas whatever and it's just i wish that there was a we had more uh, i'm saying for myself like more empathy for people like when i when i step into this like you have certain assumptions. Like I jump in, I look at you and I look at you and I, I look at you. I'm like, well, I feel like this about this guy, that guy. And I start talking to you. Those walls start coming down, all those types of things. And like, there's just not enough time for that anymore because everything's so quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. it jumps in it happens. You like it or you don't like it and you're back out. And, and you have to like have a real conversation to find out what someone actually cares about. 
doesn't happen too much anymore. And it does. Like I think um, last year I did equip powerlifting for a while, which the internet hates. And it's the first time in my life I've done something publicly that people hate. Of like, I know that I'm skirting death because right. I'm under 600 pounds and I do not want to pass out. So yeah, right. I might. But it was interesting. One time, this two different high school kids left really rude comments, and my friends were all like. F these guys and several of them replied. And like one of the guys, he's like, what's the point of all this? Like you look stupid and lame. And I was like, I have severe social anxiety. COVID really sucks. And these guys are the only people doing anything right now that's social. So yeah, I'm hanging out with these guys because like I need social interaction and life gets kind of lonely and it's a team sport. And the guy afterwards, he's like, shit, man, I'm sorry. Like, and he started following me and the other guy was like, I was like, yeah, I was like, things are really hard right now. Both of them, they're like, yeah, like I'm in high school. I have to wear a mask all the time. Like life really sucks. I was like, well, I mean, I don't want to dunk on you, but I work from home. Right. I never have to wear a mask anywhere, so it's pretty social. Dope. Social media like really disconnects us. Uh, yeah. disconnects us from each other, right? And it, and and how you post can like I'm very one dimensional on my social media. I know that for a fact, right? Everything is lifting. Like I'm like I'm a lifter. That's all I am on it on social media. But the reality is, is I'm a lot more than that, and so are all of us, right? And and I think that when we go through things, it's, it takes like, I mean, I don't, I don't know, a bit of courage maybe to be vulnerable enough to let people know what you're going through. I'm not, I have no courage, man. I'm like, I'm a cowardly lion. When I'm going through things, dude, I don't tell, I don't put anything on the internet because I, I, I don't know how I would deal with like, I, honestly, just even people knowing what I'm going through. <laughs> like, I don't even know how I would deal with like, empathy to be honest with you so i <laughs> yeah. just don't really put anything on the internet that's a real but, thing um, that's a real thing yeah it no is. i mean it is it, it is i mean they, like i think i think we as a society probably need to learn relearn maybe even to be more vulnerable because we become so disconnected like we are we're still part of a society and the people that we interact with on the internet even though it is from a disconnected perspective are still still have influence on us in some way like you said i mean they post a negative comment like that hurts us it can hurt you it can hurt anybody right or or it's something that like we walk away with like um we're conscious of it no matter what and it's not it, it is a different um dynamic than having friends that you can see say face to face that you have really good relationships with you can talk to about things that you're going through but everybody kind of i think they pick up on certain cues even unintentionally um, that may give the wrong impression or the wrong message. And it's, I think it's important for us uh, as we progress through this uh, time of advanced technology to learn to be more vulnerable outwardly, you know, on social media so that people understand, like, you know, we're not, we're not just like crap, like you said, just crashing through these as fast as possible and speaking fast for no reason. Like, like there's something behind this. I, I also think what you said about um, having being vulnerable with your friends and being able like your close group that you trust, right? Even if it's just your lifting buddies, because uh, I, I listen to something because my wife and I listen to stuff all the time. She puts in front of me, but uh, they asked a group of women. Uh, it was like this whole like conference or whatever. And it was about uh, mental health and stuff like that. And they're like, how many of you women meet with a friend or call a friend or talk to a friend once a week and just talk about how things are going, like vent, have a pressure valve. And almost every single woman raised their hand. And they're like, guys, how many of you once a week talk to a friend? No hands. Once a month, maybe one hand, right? Every six months to a year, maybe you'll see your friends at like your birthday or something and you, you catch up, right? But like, if you have a group of people that you trust enough to lift and you can be honest with like your squats, that's where it begins, right? Because like every relationship, begins with that little bit of like trust. And like, if I can trust you to be honest with me about my squats, then I'm going to trust you to, uh, if I'm having like problems with my wife, maybe I'll be like, Hey, Mike, can it like, you want to go out? Like I just, I need to talk to somebody about something like opening those doors. I think it's very, very important. And especially in like our world right now, where we're so isolated because like we're connecting right now, right? We are. And, yeah, and more than if we are just on a phone. But if we were in a room sitting around a table, it'd be a completely different experience because you'd have that like 
vibe. Like you, you it's a different you know, dynamic, completely different thing, right? And like so many guys are like, I don't want to be the guy who's like the like, oh, I have feelings and I whatever. Be that guy, man, because everyone's just waiting. It's like when no one wants to ask a question because they're gonna feel stupid, and someone asks a question, they're like, oh, thank God, I have that same question. Same thing is going on, man. And uh, I haven't talked about this a lot, but I'm actually going back to school in the fall to grad school for mental health stuff uh, to become a therapist because um, I find that there's there's a lack of this sounds terrible, but masculine therapists, right? Like when you think of therapy, you think of a certain thing, and it's it's not us, right? And uh, there's a lot of guys like us who won't talk to what is the HBO version of a therapist that we picture in our heads. And uh, me, who's been through mental health struggles, trauma, PTSD, all these things, chronic health, all these things, like, I feel like people will be more likely to come to me, not because I have it together and they're like, oh, I need to go ask that guy advice got together, but because it's like, he's been through some stuff. He understands where I'm coming from, right? Like, I wouldn't go to, a, like he said before, I would never trust a social media guy who was like, Hey, I can get you a million followers. I only got 500 because I don't want a million, but I could get them for you. Like, so he, like, I would never go to a therapist who like hadn't been through some stuff, who didn't have some stories. It was like, man, this one time, right? Like, I don't trust that guy. If you're too squeaky clean, we have two different lives, right? Like, yeah, I, I need someone who's dirty. And like, I feel like that line is something that can empathize with you. Right. Exactly. And, and, and that's like, like, and I think for men specifically, like I, my experiences with therapists have never been great because therapists never treat me like I'm like I'm a man. Right. They want to talk to me like, cause, cause women typically are more emotionally available, more emotionally open and vulnerable than men are. Like, I don't want to talk to somebody that, that is, talking to me like I'm one of their female therapy, like clients, right? I totally agree. I, I want to talk to somebody that understands me as a man, totally right? Because I'm not female and I'm never going to be like a female. I'm never going to be as open and vulnerable as a female, right? Right? It's a different language. Different language. Totally different language. But the thing is, like, what we did here today was, like, therapy, right? Like, what yeah. we talked about, the social issues and, like, every, like the, it's, it's the same thing. We just – didn't look like it. Right. And like, I also want to do like experimental with their experimental experiential therapy with people. Like who says that you can't be like lifting when, because you know what, if we're both squatting and we're going through stuff, or even if we're playing catch with the football, you are more likely to talk to me than not. If we're stacking firewood, if we are hiking somewhere, you're more likely not eye contact, walking side by side, looking at the ground, make sure we're not tripping over roots. And I'm like, so how's stuff going? Like, I'm a thousand times more likely to talk in that situation than if you sit me on the couch and you're like, what's going on? Right. Do you and think, like, do you think also though, that like men experience, um, how do I want to say this? A therapeutic experience without talking though, sometimes like, and that's kind of oh. like, I've talked about this with my wife before that, that as a man, I find therapy in doing things with my friends right and like you said like just going and hiking and just having like an experience with my friends is therapeutic in itself like i don't always need to talk about i mean you know this is controversial because i mean some therapists may say well you do need to talk about it but i'm gonna like challenge the the mainstream and say like like men maybe just need an experience for therapy because like even even as boys i tell my wife this a lot of times like like, I don't think that children, young boys need to talk about things as much as they need to go and fight a little bit. Right. Because fighting is therapeutic in a lot of ways for men and for males. Right. And I'm not saying that you need to go and like hurt, like physically, like maim right. each other. But release like, them into the wilderness. Let them get cut. Let them get dude, bruises. Let them get bloody muddy. You know, men, men and boys need um, we need. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, we need challenges. We need um, adversity. I mean, we need I think adversity. Men need to write a passage, right? Write like a you passage. Think about like strong yes. man, where it started out with like Atlas stones and Denny stones and manhood stones. Can you work on this boat if you can lift this stone up? Right? Like, yeah. there's no rites of passage anymore. And like, if you tried to put that rite of passage in place today, that would get ugly quick, right? Like, you yeah. you couldn't turn and be like. 
pick up that 200 pound stone and put it on that thing and we'll consider you a man if you can't do it you're not a man that can't happen you know what i mean <laughs> right but but to your point like i i, I do want to say like uh, i completely agree with you about the the experience uh I, and especially with service so i had a couple friends that i've been friends with my entire life and we just get together once a month and go to there's four of us we go to one of the friends houses and help that friend with whatever projects right because like we all have projects at our house or yard work or whatever that's like caught up and you get four able body hands and you get a lot done right but like just helping your friends out or like one of my friend's moms uh, is a widow and so we go over her house and like spend eight hours doing your yard work and stuff. And like, you don't need to talk about anything. And after the day, you feel good. You did a physical thing with your friends. You helped somebody out. There was positivity. Like you walk away from that day with energy, as opposed to like a lot of times you go to like a family function or something and you walk away feeling like a vampire drained you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, I would encourage get good friends and if you don't have good friends, make good friends through the, yeah. It's as simple as some of the vulnerability of squatting. It's how it starts. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> go and help some people out, man. Go, like, volunteer to pick up trash on the side of the road. Like, you'll feel better for just making the world better. Putting good out there 100%. never hurts. Never hurts you. You know what I mean? 100%, man. All, I'm, like, I'm a big I'm a big believer in um, doing – Doing kind like uh, doing uh, things that are kind to, for other people without expectation, like right? Of, of, of reciprocity, right? Just do good things for people, and if they want to offer, just say just pay it forward, right? Yeah. I don't need anything. You do because that's like that's true altruism, right? Is doing things for the sake of doing them, not yeah. doing them for the sake of getting something for yourself. Right. And there's nothing that feels better than that, in my opinion. I agree. And I think if you can do that with a group of guys and experience that together, you build bonds. It's almost like shared suffering, the same type of way. Like, yeah, choose a really hard hike one time, but another time go help a, a widow and go help them with their yard work. Like, I think building those small group relationships will will save a lot of people's mental health issues because they'll be able to talk about things instead of just keep things in so long and then exploding. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like things pile up of like, it's interesting yeah. to realize that when you make a conscious effort of like, I'll try to clean one room in the house, like every few days. And it, it's interesting because it's much harder for the house to get super messy than if you're consistently doing these things. And I think oftentimes the value of like doing things physically makes a big difference. So I think one of the most devastating effects of like, COVID was like the social isolation. You had people who were talking to each other all the time, but physical touch is a real thing of babies. If they're not held within the yep. first few days of being born, they'll pass away. Old people are the same way, like a Zoom call. And I think oftentimes we forget about that like physical interaction. And I think those rites of passage are interesting because you realize so many people, so much of modern life is just kind of coasting. Like I, it was weird to realize when People found out that I was a full-time software engineer and I quit my job to be a contract to hire, which isn't a guarantee. And like, it was way more challenging. I'm suddenly hourly. I don't have PTO. Like I have to think, consider all these things. And it was interesting because for me, realizing that without that, I could have just stayed at that job for another five years. Like I could have just continued doing. And a part of it is we grow through discomfort but it has to be a good yes. kind of discomfort. Like having a stranger harass you, that's not good discomfort. But your friend being like, if you're getting ready for a powerlifting meet, you're doing your friend a disservice if you tell them that their squats are to depth when it's clearly not. Like if you're like, oh yeah, like that'll be good because I've had friends who actually were only surrounded by super positive people. And then you go and you bomb out on squats on your first event. And if you're doing full power, you're out. And it's interesting right. to think that like, these physical things of going out and doing things with people of like cleaning the side of the road, but also like talking to strangers in real life. Like I realized with delivering pizzas is you could connect to people and it made a huge difference for them of just little things. I, sometimes like it was as simple as like picking up all the mail that someone couldn't get. And you find out it's because, Oh, they broke their hip and can't reach down to get the mail. So it's just been piling up here on the side of their house. And you're like, Seeing people as human is a big deal. And for men, there is actually, they've done a study that 
They call it the loneliness epidemic, where in 1990, 50% of men said they had at least six close friends. And now it's 25% of men say they have three close friends. And like, there's a percent of men out there, like almost one in five or something that would say they have no close friends and they don't talk to anyone about anything. And that's dangerous. So it is that idea of thinking that mental health is key because at the end of the day, having real conversations with people is important. And like part of this podcast, I love it because sometimes Darren and I, we don't talk very much other than messages. And it's nice to have these times to connect. And it's funny because people always ask like, they're like, have you met in real life? And I'm like, actually, we've never met in real life, but we talk all the time. Like, August, man, August. Colorado, August. We're coming out to Colorado to do a show. But it's interesting to think of these bonding things that oftentimes you don't make time for those things. And I've started to more, especially with a lot of my friends who are guys being like, Hey, I have StreamYard. Let's just do a quick video call rather than like do a long series of messages that kind of drain you and your way you're antsy and waiting on responses because biologically we're meant to have immediate things when we do an action. So it's this weird delayed thing where suddenly you have a conversation that's not structured in any way that would have worked before 1995 of this, like, super weird kind of interaction. So I think these conversations are really good. So it's interesting to like have that. And it's weird because like you can connect to people of like at the beginning of this of like Darren's asking how to pronounce your name. Like I only know you from videos and stuff. Right. And like it's, and here we are it's now. crazy. You yeah. Know what I mean like it's really and I mean through through lifting I've gotten to meet so many interesting people and so many cool people and like it's opened so many doors and so many just cool opportunities. And I think now being, cause when I really think about what it boils down to, like you can take anyone and make them strong. You can take anyone and make them skinny. You could, I mean, it's a math problem. The body will work every single time. If you do it consistently, the question is why won't people do it? Why won't they do it consistently? Why do they choose to eat ice cream late at night instead of whatever? Like, and there's answers to all that, right? Because coaching is therapy and therapy is coaching. That's why when you're personal training somebody like, you're talking about their day. You're not like, you know, like it's a, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I think if people were to focus more on the mental side, cause so many people with the training are just like, it's physical, it's physical, it's physical, but you guys know it's not right. Like it, it's really about being able to get yourself in the right headspace to do what you have to do when you have to do it. And uh, that all comes down to every single bit of your mental health. So I'm trying to understand my own better because I've struggled with them my whole life. And so as I'm doing that, if I can help other people and translate that, especially over to whether it be lifting or any part of life that can help people, then I just think it uh, it's a great next step. You know what I mean? Because I'll still be able to talk about mental health when I'm 90 years old. People aren't going to care about my squat anymore. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to stop watching. Yeah, no, it's a good compliment, man. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't agree more that there's there's so many aspects to, I mean, to life in general. I mean, you know, we're we're kind of fitness oriented on this, but there's a lot, a lot to fitness, man. It's definitely not, man. If it was only physical, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> that would be amazing. Like, like if I could go in and train consistently every day because my body, just because it's my body doing the work, but right, yeah, it's you look at your watch and be like, oh, my, I'm at eighty percent recovery. I'm gonna have like. Oh, I have 65% for five of five today. You know what I mean? Like that'd be perfect. But like, I mean, even in like, like the day of smartwatches, like, like where we have things that monitor our sleep and give us, uh, um, fitness scores and readiness scores and everything like that. And I'm like, if my mind's not into it, I don't care what my readiness score is because exactly. my readiness score your- is only dependent on, you know, the metrics of where my heart rate is, how my sleep's been, you know, so on and so forth. It doesn't measure anything about my mind. No, uh, my mind's effective. This with your wife, you know. Yeah, it's like your wife, wife for a gym where you're like, it was over the milk. Why are we fighting over milk? And then you go into the gym and you're like, well, I'm not supposed to. You Anxiety will spot. like tank my my training in a heartbeat. Yeah, like and it can be. It could be like a fight with my wife, like or just a conversation, like an intense conversation that goes beyond you know just like a brief conversation. Yep. Like that turns into anxiety and stress and everything. And like, so it can be I'm, one text, man. You can be walking in the gym, your phone buzzes, you look at it and you're like, my, yeah. my whole world, like my stomach just dropped, like ice cold water down my back. Like my whole world just changed. 
And yeah. now I gotta go. You know? And that's a hot, that's all mental. It has nothing to do with all your physical mental, body. Right? Because yeah, someone had a gun to your head, like you can still get <laughs> things done. But right now you can't get yourself into a space where you can compartmentalize things the way you need to. And that's all just tools, right? And yeah. we have all these physical tools where like I know exactly what to do to hit this and that and this and the <laughs> most, right? But like you tell a dude, like, hey man, how do you calm down when you're really, really angry? And he'll be like, ah, uh, I count to 10. I slam things, <laughs> I give a silent treatment, like, right? Like we don't have those tools, we don't have them. And right. like, the reason why we don't have them is because no one's talking in a way that like we talk to explain that to guys so that they'll actually hear it. So exactly. I'm hoping to close that gap some without losing all my followers of them being like, he's soft now because he cares about feelings and emotions. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll yeah, see how that goes. Yeah, I don't think we live in a time in, in... At, at a time like that anymore. I mean, maybe a decade or 15 years ago, yeah. but, but now I think people are starting to realize the importance of mental health. Um, I mean, especially with so many negative things going on in our world. And again, we're like, we're ultra connected to everything. And so it does seem like a, you know, it's all around us now, but I mean, even that affects our individual mental health and our anxiety and, and everything that goes on in daily life, our stress, it's a stressor in itself. Right. So I think people are becoming more cognizant to that and understanding that that mental aspect is so important, important to everyday life. It's important to your training regime. It's important to work. It's important to your family life and your relationship with your, your wife relationships with other people. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see, you know, where you go with this because, you know, for me, being being a man and having bad experiences with other therapists in the past, like that really understanding what makes me tick. And 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 I mean, I'm not like I'm not not hinging my entire existence on masculinity because I think that's douchey, too. But um, <laughs> so do I. But, but you know what I'm saying like, with, the, with my comparison there. You know what I was. You know what I was getting at, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, like not, absolutely. But but men do have like a different mindset, right? And I know that I have a different mindset compared to what other therapists have tried to tap into with me. And I'm like, just this is not for me. Like, right. you don't understand anything about me. You're trying to approach me like I'm like I'm female, and and nothing against females, right? That's not the point. We just we function differently. Different languages. Literally, we have different, different languages. languages, and we're not the same. We're never going to be the same. No, and I, uh, I it's, see conversations like this, like before. I, I still have like year two, three years of school before I'd actually be able to actually start doing things. But like, I want to have these conversations to see what, like, people who've had bad experiences, like, why was it bad? Like, what, right? Because that right there, I can learn things and be like, well, I don't need to be talking like that, man. I need to, you know, like, there's so many things that like. I just, so many guys have a story or something that like, are like, man, I'm not close to this. There just needs to be better options out there. Right. Like yeah. it's like having no good coaches. Like, so yeah. uh, this, this is, man, this has been a helpful talk for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's been good. I mean, we definitely went a different direction. We intended to, right. I mean, <laughs> this was I supposed to, to be the Brian Altru show and, and like talk about, you know, your challenges and everything. But I, I mean, it was, still, it was a really productive conversation and I'm glad yeah. that we had it, man. And I would listen to it. I like, I like just hearing guys talk about this stuff is fascinating to me because it doesn't get covered. Right. And it like, doesn't. the funny thing is every time I've ever brought up anything about mental health on a podcast, immediately the host is like, I'm so glad we're talking about this. And then the rest of the podcast about that, because so many guys have so much to say about it. It's just, it never gets brought up because it's like, no, nah, what about the squat, bro? Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And like, everyone who listens to your show hears about squats. Everyone knows about deadlifts and they, they can watch my channel all day and know what I feel about that. Right. But like the three of us just got together and talked about like, being able to like change your mind, have a different opinion, keep an open mind, social justice, like all these things, social, like all these yeah. things we talk about. Like, I, I think that's awesome, man. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think that's a sign of a good podcast and not like, <laughs> like you guys are, you guys are like the Samuel L. Jackson of podcasts right now. Because the crazy thing is to me, this has been super educational because realizing that, like Darren doesn't always talk about things as much like feelings and stuff. And though, though our first conversation ever, we were, we were messaging about some work <laughs> stuff that he was dealing with and he happened to accidentally call me and we like talk about like how work's going for him and all this stuff. And it was surprising to realize that 
oftentimes, especially like the older we get people all the times they're like, Oh, I hate phone calls. I hate like, just text me. And it's like that conversation literally he butt dialed me and I was in the middle of a work meeting and I was like, I have to go, there's an emergency. And I just turned off my camera and I, no, I was just like, Darren, I was like, what, I was like, what the hell is he calling me on Instagram for? But it's that example of real connection. I'm like reaching out to people of like, find that community of it doesn't have to be big and stuff, but it's crazy to realize with lifting how many times you can just like find friends who everyone, all of us are lonely these days because it is like the a crisis that's just only been growing and the thing is we can solve that because like not to get too touchy feeling everything but one of my friends who changed my life during the pandemic because i was having a real rough time and i was like i just like need a friend i need someone to talk to like i just am lonely isolated he's like here's what i'll tell you that if you ever need a hug go hug someone else because when you hug someone you get a hug in return and i was like it was super eye opening for me because in my mind, I was like, I need someone to reach out to me. And he was like, other people need people to reach out to them. And when you reach out to someone, they reciprocate. And like, I don't know where I was going with that, but it was really eye opening for me to think about that. Like, as men, oftentimes there is this idea of that you're just kind of like the lone wolf or the lone warrior when actually humans are very tribal, communal people. Like that's kind of like we don't we ever live yeah. like that, right? Like guys are all like, I'm I'm like whatever. Like that's never how it's been. It's always been like hunting parties, going out and being like, oh my <laughs> wife. Like, you know what I mean? Like it guys have always needed to go away and be guys, and like it, it's always been part of it. And like that's something we've lost, kind of like the rites of passage, right? Like there's no like, well, like how many guys are going to the gym trying to prove something to somebody? Like went back and fighting. We always used to say, man, everyone's fighting something, right? Like, that's the truth. Like, you, yeah. In, when you look at powerlifting, when you look at bodybuilding, when you look at strongman, everyone's fighting something, right? There's a reason why 700 pounds isn't enough. Because if you were a logical human being, you would have stopped at 500 and been like, what else in my life is going to weigh 500? Like, there's a reason why it's never enough. There's a reason why you need the bigger biceps and the lower body fat and the stronger deadlift and the everything, right? Like, that's the mental side. And like, guys are like, the gym is my therapy. I'm like, come on, man. Like <laughs> if it's your therapy, then like, you don't have very big problems. Good for you. I'm happy for you. But like, yeah. for me, it's not like I got, I've, I've had a harder life than that. I, you know, I, I actually need to unbox this stuff and figure it out. So I need yeah. friends. I need people to check in on me. I need to check in on people, things like that. So that's uh, so important, man. Uh, I'm going to reiterate that. Like having, having a good network, a good circle, and I mean, kind of going back to what John said earlier, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with having like a small group of friends mm -hmm. have a small group of friends who you trust. Yeah. Right. Because you can't, the bigger your circle gets, the less you trust the people in your circle. Right. I mean, that's just in, I mean, it's, it's going to happen. It's bound to happen. Small circle of well-trusted friends. And, and it's so important to have those people in your life that, I mean, not only that you can turn to, but they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to check in on you and you're going to reciprocate. Like right? reciprocation is incredibly important. Like I go back to like, uh, I don't, I do things without expectation, but there's a point, right? That if, if you do too many things and nobody, and like the other person doesn't ever reciprocate, right? There's not an expectation of reciprocation, but there is an expectation of, I don't know. Brotherhood, brotherhood of, right, of humanity, like, right? That I don't that always you, need to be the one asking. I don't need to it, always be the one reaching every out. Every relationship is is a two way street. Yeah, right? um, I'm never going to keep tabs on what somebody owes me, but at some point, if I've given you too much, like maybe you're not the right person to be in my circle, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so so important to have those people that can reciprocate and you can go to bounce ideas off of and just go like. Like you said, I mean, I miss my younger years of going and just camping with my friends. We did, I and mean, we talked about all kinds of stuff. Everything. Everything. And that's the thing. But you it, don't need but it was to, like, the grab experience that was therapeutic, right? Yeah. But you also don't need to grab your friend and talk about, like, you don't need to be like, hey, what feelings do you have today? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about yeah. talking. Talk about just squats. Talking. Talk about yeah. a TV show. Talk about anything. Trust me, the stuff will come out. Right. Yep. It's just 100%. about communication. 
communication leads to more communication. It's a flow, right? Like it starts trickling, gets a flow, and, and eventually yeah. it goes, right? But like you're never going to talk about your feelings if you don't start talking about your squat and your favorite TV show. Or your, <laughs> exactly. Whatever, exactly. right? So just find some friends that you have some common things with because you really do become like the five people you're around the most. You yeah. really, really do. And if they are like yeah. – driven positive people you're gonna be a driven positive person if they suck you're gonna suck like it's Dude. true like look at all the people in your life that suck and look at their friends like we, we said it on here many times one of my favorite things is is uh if you're surrounded by nine idiots you're certainly you're sure to be the tenth right right yep and so and, and in a world of almost eight billion people and i know like not all of them are accessible but but the reality is is that we live in in a time where you don't have to settle for bad people in your life. No. Right? If somebody is not a positive, like I don't I don't I don't know how to say this quite right. Like I I don't have people, you shouldn't have people in your life to to do things for you. But if they're not a positive influence or they're not reciprocating, I guess that's the best way to put it. Like they're not adding value to your life. And again, that's a reciprocating uh, thing, right? You should be adding value to their life too. But if there's people that aren't adding your value to your life, there's freaking 8 billion other people in the world just waiting to add value to your life, right? So we should never, like, life is too short to put up with toxicity, people that are not good for you. Like, if you want, like you said, if you want to achieve something, surround yourself by people who are doing what you want to do. If you want to quit drinking, stop hanging out with the people that drink. <laughs> Start hanging out with the people that don't drink, right? If you want to stop, if you want to become, uh, you want to get into fitness, start hanging out with people that are doing, they're going to the gym like consistently. And it's right. that, I mean, it really, it sounds difficult, but it's really that simple. It is. It's just hard to make changes, right? Like, it is. Because... That's that's true because like we said earlier, everyone wants to be comfortable and it's comfortable where you're at because your body is in homeostasis. It knows it's not going to die. You have these friends, but like change is where change is where the growth happens and it's change, just, unfortunately, just, typically isn't fun. Right. It's so, not comfortable. I mean, like most John said earlier, great things because great things don't feel too good when you're doing them. You yeah. Know what I mean? and, it, and it comes down to everything like growth happens through being uncomfortable, like growth happens in our life. No matter what, it, whether it's the gym or it's work or it's daily life, it is dealing with uncomfortable things, period. Like you have to get uncomfortable to grow. Like um, even in sports, you know, I say this very, very frequently. If your goal getting into strongman is just to win on day one, you're doing it wrong. Like you have to lose to grow. Right. And, and that losing is the same thing in everything in life It's being uncomfortable, going through controversial situations like, you know, overcoming the next hill, whatever it is, like everything in life is about it's kind of about losing, going through uncomfortable times. Right. So that you can grow. You have to lose. It's like businesses, like most successful businessmen have failed multiple times before they became successful. Right. It's true. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's not fun, though. Like failing doesn't fun. feel fun. It's but realizing fun. that when you can look back on it, sometimes those moments are like the funniest things to think of, of like these little things that like brought you to the path that you're in. Because at the end of the day, we're not meant to coast of like our minds only grow when we're challenged. Our bodies only grow when we get heavier weight. And in reality, for some reason, sometimes we act like our emotions aren't the same way that it's like you need pressure and you need tension to grow these things and like to be challenged so i remember being super surprised the first time that like darren like called me out on something i was like whoa this is nice when he was like hey pump the brakes maybe don't post that like let's not join in on what's happening right now online and a part of me is like but what if we're on the wrong side he's like what if you are on the wrong side? That's what exactly what I'm saying right now. Like that fear of, because in my mind, I was like, there's that fear of like, you don't want to be on the wrong side. So you're going to pick whatever side seems like it's winning. Right. And it's like, you. that's, that's true. Not, like it, because it feels good to be, because in the, like we've gotten this idea now of like, that you want to be on the right side of history. 
but you never know. I guarantee you every bad movement in history thought they were on the right side of something. Like no one goes out of the day, no. goes outside to be like, we're the bad guys today. Like right. we're going to just. Wreck nobody them. does. Absolutely like, nobody does. And that's like, that's a very good, man, we can talk about this stuff forever. I mean, honestly, right. But, but like, you know, I want to make the point though. Like my perspective is, is to not, it is, is not to never pick a side. Right, mm -hmm. it's stand back and get enough information to make an intelligent decision, right? To pick a side because because there is some truth in um, how's the saying go? Like if you don't stand for something, you'll never st you'll stand for anything. Yeah, you'll right? fall for anything. Yeah, yeah, or you'll fall for anything. If you never stand for anything, you'll fall for anything. And so you got to be careful there. But like standing for something is important too. But like just jumping at the first thing that comes along sounds good. Like is it's a pit trap, often yeah. a pit trap. Like you can get lucky, right? There's a 50, 50 chance you might get lucky and end up on the right side. But, but um, our biases sometimes take us the wrong direction, and so it's so very important to stand back and collect information to make an, an intelligent and educated decision on, you know, what makes the most sense. Because you know, in this world where everybody, because there is a lot of truth to that, everybody. Everybody thinks they're on the right side, and and that's throughout history. Everybody, everybody that is, that picks a side has God with them, so to speak, right? right. <laughs> Which is right. kind of an is ironic because like these guys think God is on their side, and these guys think that God is on their side. But the reality is, is that um, for you personally, um, I don't know where I was going with this. Now I kind of got off <laughs> off track, but. Um, <laughs> Make like getting enough information to make a good decision is is always the best course in my opinion, right? Understanding that like what what's best for you, right? Because you may the wrong side may be what's best for you. The right side might be what's best for you. So, um, yeah, I kind of got off track there. No, we've been <laughs> <laughs> no, it it makes sense though because it's that idea that. At the end of the day, you want to stand for like strong principles and it never hurts to like wait and steady yourself a bit more. It's this idea of sometimes like people get like, and I did it for the longest time with a like deadlift of realizing like sometimes you just want to like just jerk into it. Like you'll see people like that's oftentimes I've seen like that's how you tear your bicep is that quick, like just kind of jerking into it. Cause in your mind, you're like, I just need to pull the weight up. And it's like, if you get kind of like, really tense and ready and just kind of wedge it's gonna just go up but if you're in your mind like what you think is making you more ready by just kind of jerk it is actually in reality taking that second to pause because it is like there it is important to stand for things of like taking care of people and like standing up for mental health and stuff is something really important because it is and this and these days there you're overwhelmed with like a plethora of entertainment and stuff but it's all so shallow of like how often do you have like a real deep conversation with people and everything like it can be easy to just kind of live in the surface level of like and that's why extended periods with like other men is important or other women of like having those groups where you can actually like put down roots and everything but in modern life like it's not meant for roots we're just like transplanted all the time and it's right. like you can't you can't grow to be a two hundred sixty five year old tree that gets chopped down by Brian right. <laughs> yeah. if you're just being transplanted all the time. I never do so. It's yeah. yeah. I've realized. I it's funny. I was joking about the hour and forty two minutes being our longest episode. Yeah, but it's well, no we're, longer than that. we're, <laughs> it's we're almost an hour and fifty minutes. So like, we should, <laughs> like I said, I mean, we could probably talk about um, yeah. all yeah, this I'm stuff. Sure we can keep through. going. For Your story, very, very though, long time. is there anything else you needed to mention? Because I realize you had this list of things, and I don't know if we covered. Hey, man, I had a great time. There. I had a great yeah. time. I can always come back on and keep talking. Believe me, I'm, I'm sure we can. Oh, we'll more definitely time. have you back. I mean, hands down, obviously, uh, 100, almost an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, best episode so far, man. It was, dude, Yeah, it's easy to talk to you, and that's, that's what makes having a podcast fun and uh, easy actually is having guests on that that are easy to talk to they're very engaging uh so definitely Man, i feel like it. i just made some friends we just like hung out like around a table like that's what it feels like to me like this is great like yeah i'd be hugging you guys i'd hug you guys right now <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah we'll all meet up someday 
Yeah, man. someday. I always say that. Homestead. I always say that though, and I'm like, do I really mean that? Is that yeah. really gonna happen? It is. I want it to happen. Really? It's I really want world it world. to happen, but like eventually you meet so many people and you have so many obligations to meet up. It's like, it's not feasible. Dude, one day down I hate to be the Debbie Downer of that conversation, yeah, but like, that's kind of the truth. I, there's <laughs> been so many times in my life when like, I didn't think things were going to line up and they just came back together. So yeah, tell, tell, do. Man. it is Andy's a small world, like man. Maryland. It is a small world. So, yeah. So we go yeah. to Maryland sometimes. So yeah. yeah. You guys around. are over in Maryland. You're welcome to come camping, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, and we're doing that thing up in Colorado. So that'll be real exciting. Yeah, I'm out of Colorado, so that's Colorado, that's a, that's it's a, a good the thing. challenge is getting away from people here, though. Yeah, that's true. It's even in the back country, you you run across it's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> people like outdoors there, man. Maryland, they do. They yeah. definitely like the outdoors. I mean, Maryland's I think, so, such a small state. It is and human guys and human. Oh really yeah, because it's so so much water and stuff around there. Because yeah. the whole thing is like just basically a peninsula. It's like a swamp, basically. It's yeah, like, it's yeah, you know it's I mean? a swamp, and that's like yeah. it's it's a lot. That heat on the East Coast is like Darren's saying the heat is really bad up in Colorado. Because I was about to be like, oh, I'm excited. It's for not bad. Weather. No, you know, Colorado is uh, kind of like a little paradise. Uh, honestly, it's yeah. very it's very dry. That's what I don't like about it. It's yeah, too it's dry. dry. Um, but where Colorado. I'm from, eastern Montana, western North Dakota, on the other hand, we get the extremes of every season. Um, extreme cold in the winter, extreme heat in the summer, very humid. Um, yeah, it's oh. brutal up there. Cold and humid is not cool because it gets real cold up there. It's not like Maryland gets cold. Like we hit like zero like once this year. Oh, like, yeah, so we don't get like cold like you guys get cold. Western North Dakota. So... When I was, uh, so I'm 44, so I, I hate I hate saying this, but when I was a young man, <laughs> God, that may just be so lovely. When I was a young man, 18 to 20 years old, I worked on the drill, I worked on rigs. Um, I actually worked on uh, workover rigs, and so they're a little bit smaller, but our guy lines that would come down off the derrick, right, for stability, they're three-eighths uh, inch diameter normally. You'd come out there and they'd be like two inches in frost. Oh. Because the humidity in the winter and then the cold, it gets like it'll get negative 30 ambient temperature and stay that way for January and February. And then the wind chills would reach set negative 70, negative 80 uh, consistently. It was just dude, who was walking across America and was like, yep, this is where I'll stay. This, this, <laughs> <is good>. Lewis <laughs> and Clark, that would, that would be Lewis and Clark. <laughs> Incredible, man. Incredible. They're like, like they're like we found the we found the West Coast. Come out. Like, ah, it seems chilly, but I guess it'll be okay. <laughs> and they went all across that part. They went all across North Dakota, Montana, Iowa, or Idaho, Dude, rather. Those people um, did some, that's some crazy adventure stuff, right there. Can you man. imagine Dude, walking across this country? No, Incredible. no, no medicine, not, not, clean no. water's not guaranteed. No. Like. Just that food situation. I'm a, in my mind, like well, no, just, I think food was yeah. plentiful back then, right? Because the uh, the American oh, right. bison population was massive across the Great Plains at that mm. point in time, and and moose and elk and everything else lived down on the plains. Um, and everyone so, was capable. Like everyone could like build their own house, yep. build boil their water, kill things, dress things. You know, like yeah, everyone could do all those things. Right. And I think the relations with. Uh, um, the indigenous uh, First Nations people were much better for them coming through as well um, versus later through the colonial period when, when yeah, when everybody it pushed west weird. and it got, got weird. Yeah, it yeah. got bad. <laughs> people in big groups just get bad. That's the lesson of yes. this. That's the lesson of this whole thing. That's Stay the lesson small. of this whole thing. <laughs> Stay small. Tribe. Small, tight tribe. Dude, Yes. Man, yeah. I could talk about that too. That's yeah. I almost no, like so good. like when I was going on that tangent, I kind of got lost. I almost went <laughs> on. Uh, um, uh, God, what's his name? Jack Man, Donovan. Just, thank you, Donovan. Jack Donovan. I almost went on a Jack Donovan ring. His, like, I don't care. Essay is amazing. <laughs> like where he's like mentally, we're not. It's hard for us to care more about more than a dozen people directly. And like tribes, like 150 exactly. was like the maximum of like, like general Dunbar's people number? you know. It's like yeah, uh, Jack Donovan. Yeah, where he's like, yeah, where he's like the tribes thing of like, because he has those essay, I don't care, that he was like, there's power in saying you don't care because at the end of the day, 
our hearts and minds only have so much energy. And when you're throwing it at all these different groups of people and all these causes, you're actually robbing yourself of energy for one, for loving yourself, but also loving the people directly around you. So that's why it's important to like stand up for your group and your group may not always be right, may not always be wrong, but like at the end, having that close community is like the most important thing. Because at the end of the day, we really like, you it's interesting because in our minds we think that we're connecting to tons of people if you have thousands of followers on the internet or hundreds in your mind you're like i talk to hundreds of people a day but it's like how often were they anything below the surface right that's like how how many of them are showing up at your funeral yeah Yeah, and that's what you have to think about it's like at the end of the day there's a reason why like seal teams all these small groups are usually like groups of like six guys and everything and six people to carry a casket. Like it's a small group of like, that's who your core unit should be. And finding those people is really important because at the end of the day, you'll find those people in the most unexpected places. Like Darren and I just like literally were just Instagram friends and just like would talk about random things and more and more Hey, here we are. This is 26 episodes in. We've done like a bunch of episodes. We still haven't met in person, but you, if you talk about things, it matters. So I'm glad you brought up the Jack Donovan thing. Cause I was about yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. essay for most men, like will change your life to think of like, you just yeah. don't have the emotional energy and it's not being selfish to say, I want to conserve my energy for myself and my family or my no. people around me. Because There's always of, so many yeah. cares to give, you know what I yeah. mean? And like, you have to make sure that you spend them correctly. Because if it was money, you couldn't just buy every like same thing. Like, yeah, your emotional energy is important to keep. And yeah. if you're gonna do intense lifting, there's a certain amount of emotional energy that goes into that, right? And like, if you give it away to somebody on the internet, you guys know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Right. Read Jack on. I'm a big fan of Jack Donovan. Not everybody is because he's you know he's sort of this tribalist, you know, and that's got a bad rap. So like has had a bad rap in, you know, mainstream media and whatever, but he, he's got a good argument for it. And, and I think, uh, yeah, if you haven't read his uh, way of the man, you know, it's I never have, but I'm, I'm a big good. reader. So I'll definitely it's, check you it out. should. And it's, and it's really, a good, really good, it's, it's only like 300 pages or something. It's, it's a like very a easy, read. digestible. Yeah. It's very thing. digestible. Yeah. So I would highly recommend that one. If you have time at the way of men and like Absolutely. his other ones kind of repeat themselves. But then if you look up the essay, I don't care. Is the title of it that's a really good one it's like kind a of small a little like yeah yeah so it's a I'll small little out. like 1500 words or something sure but yeah overall I'd like, check it out. this is definitely a good conversation yeah. i was surprised because it's funny we should, we should really wrap it up I, we're <laughs> almost like at two hours yeah <laughs> we should I guess well, I know most of our viewers happy. will get past like 30 minutes i know yeah. <laughs> that is. There, be, there will be some people sitting here right now though and that's I appreciate true. that. That's like really that's do. the trivia because that's the at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter how like at like the end of the day, like hundreds of people will check out a video, but then it's a much smaller portion that actually finish a video. Yeah. Pretty much for all of YouTube, you'll upload a fifteen minute video and you'd be surprised. You'll be like the average watch times like ninety seconds, and you're like yeah, or three 100%. minutes, and you're like yeah. oh, like so at the end of the day, it's the dedicated people who are making it to the end. Yeah. And so those people want to hear it anyway. Room. Yeah. Like those are your big fans because at the end of the day, do you want to have hundreds and thousands of people who only care about you for 90 seconds or those handful of people who are there who, who even watch the end credits and Darren doesn't ad read on Spotify. It's like, those are the people. Yeah. Well, like, it's that good. But yeah. Thank you so much. And I realized you, you guys, man, this is awesome. Yeah, it's probably late for you anyway. It's probably 10 o'clock after 10 for you. So. Oh, he doesn't sleep. Yeah. He told me right, he's doesn't fine for yeah. all night. So if you need to go to yeah. sleep, Brian and I can just go for another yeah. two hours, no, no, Joe no. Rogan style, talk about mushrooms. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> this is going to go in a completely different direction now. That's uh, true. This is the after hours podcast. Yeah. People will be like, was this really a three hour podcast? That's awesome. But thank you man. so much. This is really thank great. Thank you guys. You have any parting words? I know your social media or anything. Um, if you guys want to check me out, you'll be looking at my name. It's Brian Alsru, but uh, just look that up on YouTube. Uh, check out my playlist section for a lot of tutorials about strongman, lifting, uh, motivation, all those types of things. But yeah, um, I, that's. 
that's pretty much the one that that has my important stuff is YouTube. Awesome. Awesome, man. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. This was really Support us on Patreon or Anchor and find us on Instagram or Facebook.